Hey guys, welcome to Cooking with Crystal. Today I will be showing you how to make chiles rellenos. There are many ways to make chiles rellenos and different ways to serve them, but today I will be showing you how I grew up eating them, and that is in a broth with some rice. This is my grandma's recipe, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Today I will only be using four chiles poblanos, but you can use as many as you like. Half an onion, three Roma tomatoes, all-purpose flour, four to six large eggs, a pound of queso fresco or fresh cheese, some chicken bouillon seasoning, and a few toothpicks. We will start off by roasting the chiles. I recommend you roast them directly on top of the burner just so it speeds up the process. You'll want to have the heat at about medium heat so that they don't burn or you don't burn yourself. Once the chiles have roasted evenly all around, you will place them in a plastic bag and allow them to sit for five minutes so that the skin is easy to peel. As the chiles are sitting, I like to get started on the broth. For that, you will need to chop the onion and tomatoes. Place a pot over medium low heat and add in a small amount of oil. And then you will add in the chopped onion and tomatoes. Stir that up a little bit so it all gets incorporated with the oil. And next you will add in the chicken bouillon seasoning. I would say I used about a tablespoon and a half, but this seasoning will be to taste. Once that is all mixed together, add in about a cup of water and allow for that to boil for three to five minutes or until the tomato has softened. It's been a few minutes and my tomato has softened a little bit and now I will be adding in the rest of the water for the broth. I used a large beer mug to measure the water. I filled it up and poured that into the pot. I actually wanted a little bit more water, so I added half a large mug of water. Reduce your heat to the lowest setting, cover the pot and allow for it to sit on the stove until your chiles are done. Next, it is time to peel the chiles. I like to use gloves so that my fingers don't get all enchilados. I always like to start with the first chile that I placed in the bag and I use a separate bag to dispose of the skin that I am peeling off. The skin of the chiles should be easy to peel. It should just slide off as you're gliding your fingers on top of it. You shouldn't have to peel very hard. You can pinch and peel, or you can just kind of scrape with your fingertips like I'm doing with my thumb. If you're having trouble peeling a part of the chile like I was right there at that tip, don't worry about it, just leave it alone. You do not want to ruin the chile by ripping it. Next, you will need to open the chiles to remove the seeds. Press down softly with a knife you do not want to cut the other side of the chile. Try to open up the chile with your fingers. If you didn't cut enough, go ahead and use your knife again. Remember pressing softly so that you don't cut the other side. Mm -hmm. 
Now that it's opened up, you can see the seeds. I like to kind of cup my fingers behind all those seeds and just press with my thumb and kind of wiggle my fingers in the back so that I can get all those seeds off into the palm of my hands as best as I can without making too much of a mess inside of the chile. And if you can still see some more seeds, go back and gently scrape off the remaining seeds from the chile. Once you have cut them all open and removed the seeds, you will take your toothpicks and you will also get your queso fresco and cut it into slices. And now you will begin stuffing the chiles. I love when chiles rellenos have a lot of cheese, but you can use as much as you like. But also keep in mind that the chiles have to be able to close without ripping. That's enough cheese for me. I like to make sure that it can close and if it can, I get my toothpicks ready to close the chile. Take one toothpick and put it through one side of the chile, going through the other. Try not to place it too high because it can rip through the chile. Take another and put it right under that one, through the other side. And then you will add some more to the bottom. As you can see, my chile ripped right there. Try to be careful with the toothpick placement. Take another, place it through one side, out the other. Sometimes I like to pierce it through the cheese so that it holds extra strong and put the last one. And there it is. Continue the same steps with the rest of your chiles. And next you will need a bowl to add the egg whites into. I like to use a spoon to tap the top of the egg to break the eggshell and then I carefully remove some of the eggshell. And then you will pour out the egg white. Be careful because the yolk can pop. If you have an easier method to removing the egg yolk from the egg white, you can use whatever way you like. This is just the way that I do it. Once you have separated the egg white from the yolk, set the yolk aside because you will need it later. Continue to do the same with the remaining eggs. In the bowl, I have egg whites from four eggs. Next, you will need to use a whisk to whip the eggs. I 
went ahead and added two more egg whites because I like a little bit of extra egg. So total, I used six egg whites. Once the egg whites are nice and fluffy, you will gradually add in all of the egg yolks and continue to whisk. Once you have finished whisking the egg, place a pan over medium high heat and add in a generous amount of oil and allow for it to heat up. Place some all purpose flour on a cutting board or plate. Take a chile and cover all sides with flour. Next, you will submerge the chile into the bowl of egg. Make sure you coat all sides of the chile with the egg and immediately place it into the frying pan. Use a spatula to get some oil on top of the chile so the egg on top can cook. Next, you will carefully grab the chile from the stem and flip it over. Again, using your spatula, you will scoot some of that oil onto the parts of the egg that are not cooking. The chile is done, pick it up from the stem or with the spatula, place on a plate and set it aside and continue to do the same with the rest. This part is optional, but when I have extra cheese, I like to cover it in the flour and also dip it in the egg and fry it just like I did with the chiles. Once you have everything all fried, it is time to add it to the broth. At this time, you may also remove the toothpicks. I went ahead and added in the cheese that I fried and now I am adding in the chiles. Cover that up and allow it to boil for two to three minutes. After a few minutes, your chiles are done, remove from heat, and serve. After all those steps, the chiles are finally done. Serve over some rice and pour in some of the broth. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon to receive notifications of my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching Cooking with Crystal.